Now, there are really two types of black holes. There are stellar remnants. We've talked about neutron stars. And neutron stars that collapse further turn into um, these uh, massive stellar holes. But then there's also galactic centers, which are believed to be giant black holes that have maybe developed from a star, but they grew over time. So let's take a look at um, those two classes for a second. Uh, it'd be nice to see some animations and things. I'm trying to really get in this one uh, more of the technical aspects. But here's a little pretty illustration of a stellar black hole that happens to be near another star. There are, you know, many s star systems are binaries. In this case, the black hole is um, the gravitational field is pulling mass off the star. And the other example, and our Milky Way is a very good example, is in the galactic center, there is a black hole. so to speak. Now another thing about black holes is there's no reason for them to not, they can keep growing. They can get fatter and fatter, bigger and bigger. In fact, as I said, the Milky Way has um, a black hole and it's estimated to be on the order of one billion solar masses. Just think about that. One billion suns in this thing called a black hole. Who knows what's really going inside a black hole? Nobody does. And one model of the universe is because black holes keep growing that the end of the universe will be dominated by black holes that have a captured mass over eons and eons. So, but an interesting thing is that even though black holes uh, dis will dominate the universe, and we'll talk about the future of the universe at some later time, they do actually evaporate. I'll say a word on that. That's called Hawking's radiation after the great physicist who came up with this notion. Uh, let's cover the um, orbiting a black hole, a small object. Let's estimate uh, what kind of uh, physics uh, what we're dealing with here. Is it stressful, not stressful? Uh, acceleration is m over r squared times the gravitational constant. And uh, if you plug in the numbers, you're going to get an acceleration of about uh, 15,000 um, meters per second squared. Compare that to Earth, which is about 10 meters per second squared surface gravity. The acceleration around the Milky Way black hole is about 1,500 times stronger than that. Let's compute the speed of an object going just around that point, just at around the event horizon. How fast would it be? We can plug in the numbers. V squared is R times the acceleration. Um, you get something that is, uh, you know, this is about the speed of light. Of course, realizing nothing can go faster than the speed of light, but when we solve this, you take the square root of that, and you get, lo and behold, about 0 0.7 C. This is the relativistic value meaning we uh, really need to apply relativity here. But this is, gives you an idea. We're talking about relativistic speeds. So let's uh, address relativity a little bit, uh, and I'll show you some of the outputs of that. Consider first a bound Newtonian orbit. In other words, a particle moving um, in such a way through the orbits we normally know. For example, the sun around the Earth. These are stable orbits. However, a bound relativistic orbit is quite, quite different. It doesn't have a nice foci. It's not elliptical. In fact, the thing is more like a um, uh, unbound, non-repeatable, well, it's bounded, but non-repeatable spirographic, like if you ever remember that toy, at least in my generation, it was around there. It's a non-repeating pattern. This is a simulation. If you carry the simulation out through many orbits, you notice there's a really a bound. There's an inner bound and then there's an outer bound. So the particle itself is bounded in some radio range outside the event horizon and it will never fall in because its energy is too high. So black holes don't have to capture everything. Let's talk about evaporation. 
black holes disappear. That's what we mean. They lose mass. That's what we mean by evaporate. Now, how the heck is that happening? How does something that cannot let anything escape evaporate? Doesn't seem to make sense. And uh, but it's been shown by uh, Hawking's. It goes at a very very slow rate. In fact, you can compute it. And for a large black hole, we're talking about time scales of 10 to the 50th to 10 to the 70th years. Compare that to the age of the universe, which is a mere uh, 15 times um, 10 to the 90 years. Uh, so a black hole lives a very very long time. Uh, the net effect though is that matter antimatter is produced by vacuum fluctuations if it occurs near the event horizon it's very po if this occurs near the event horizon well there's a very good chance that um, one particle will escape the other one will remain uh, fall back into the hole and so eventually uh, mass is lost that way and that uh, a black hole never accumulating mass will eventually lose mass by that method.